Hello everyone! Welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, welcome! Today we are going to be making a video on everything that I can crochet in one day. It is slightly after 8.30 a.m. and so I'm going to very quickly record this introduction before my daughter wakes up and we are going to start off the day by choosing something out of our crochet project drawer. So I have the drawer here and we're going to be seeing what we are going to be making today. Today we are going to be making a Harry Potter bookmark. So the first house that I'm going to go with is Slytherin. I'm going to be using this green color. It's more teal than what I would have wanted, but hi Phoenix but we are going with the closest color match that I had. And then the next thing that I'm gonna be using is this silvery gray that I have in a scrap ball of yarn. I'm not gonna be using a pattern. I'm just gonna freehand it, um, but it should be pretty simple. So without further ado, let's get into it. So this is my finished bookmark. It probably would have taken only like 30 minutes to make if my daughter didn't want attention and also I had to restart it a couple of times because I've never done like carrying my yarn like through color changes. So that was a little bit of a learning curve for me. So I started it at 9.12 and it's 10 o'clock now and I just finished, but it didn't take 45 minutes. Um, I'm hoping to get two bookmarks done in the next hour. The next colorway I'm gonna be using is for Gryffindor. This one is Red Heart Super Saver. I think that this one is probably also Red Heart because I bought it from Walmart. I just don't have the little paper for it anymore. Next one I'm going to be working on is for Ravenclaw. So it's 11.10 and I'm finished with the Ravenclaw one. So we've gotten three things done today so far. We are going to go have snack time and then I will come back and finish up the um, Hufflepuff. I think it's the one that we haven't done. So update, it is 12.10 and I have this much done so far. I'm using uh, just some scrap ball of black yarn and the same color yellow orange that I used for the Gryffindor. So it is 111 and we are done with all four bookmarks. You guys, on a side note, look at this cute basket that I got for free. I put away all of the yarn and supplies that I had used for the bookmarks and I feel like that is also something that should be celebrated. So. Now we are going to see what we are going to crochet next. Says 
a strawberry bag charm. So I mentioned this in the video that I will probably post um, tomorrow. And it is actually going to be a keychain because originally I thought I wasn't going to have any of like the little metal keychain holders. And I ended up ordering some. So instead of like crocheting a lanyard to make it into a bag charm, I'm just going to make it into a keychain instead. But yeah, that's super exciting. I'll let you guys know which tutorial I end up following. Also, one other thing that I want to mention is I started out this video with the intention of doing a how much can I crochet in one day and then I realized that my husband is off for five days after this. I think Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Yeah, so five days. So I'm actually going to turn it into a how much can I crochet in a week. So that'll be super fun. I didn't realize that he had so much time off. So he can like watch the toddler for me. But yeah, I'll let you guys know which strawberry pattern I'm going with and we'll see how many colors we need for it. And then we can choose them off the yarn wall. So for the top of the strawberry, I want to go with like a darker forest green and I'm kind of going between this one and this one. So I'm just going to go ahead and use this one since it's only a partial skein. And then I want to make two strawberries, at least maybe three depending on how long they take. I want to make one that is in like a darker red color. And I want to make one that's in pink, but I think I have some scrap yarn, so let me go check. So I'm looking in my scrap yarn basket and I definitely have some pink that we can use, but I apparently also have this red and I also have this red. I don't want to use this one because it's very rough material but I'm debating on whether or not I want to use this, and I think I do. So we're just going to be using this pink and this red and this ball of green. And then I'm going to grab my polyfill since, like, I will want to stuff it probably. So it's about to be 3.30, and there was, like, a bit of a time gap because my daughter asked for lunch, and then my husband came home from work. But I'm about to start working on the strawberries. I looked at, like, probably 10 to like tutorials slash patterns on YouTube and I didn't really like any of them because none of them were narrated or they were like in a different language or something like that and I'd rather just make up my own. <laughs> update again last night because as soon as I finished like actively crocheting the three strawberries I went to go eat dinner and then whenever I came back I was doing adult things like taxes and stuff and so I figured we would chat for a minute because I do need to weave in the 12 ends between the three strawberries and so on the little leaf bits to the actual strawberry. So last night I checked the website for this 
vendor type situation that I've been trying to get into. It's not necessarily like a craft show or a vendor fair or anything like that. It's like a public like art walk event. And so what's really nice about it is you don't have to pay to set up your art there as long as like the things that you're selling are handmade then you don't have to or then you're allowed to set up there and they had like I've been emailing them and messaging them because they were a little bit behind in getting out like the the vendor registration form or like the application or whatever and so I had they had told me that it was gonna be ready this week and so I went and I checked on it and it was finally up so I decided to fill it out and I figured that this would happen but one of their requirements was that you needed to have a sales tax registration which makes sense like it's something that I've been needing to do for a while anyway um, but I just haven't like sold anything to anyone other than like immediate friends and family and I wasn't really <clears throat> I wasn't really selling it I was mostly just having them reimburse me for like the cost of the supplies so I wasn't making a profit on anything um but I so I, last night whenever I was filling out the registration form I went ahead and since the fair is only a month away I had to go ahead and get the application process going for the sales tax registration because it can take up to two weeks to get to you and if I like needed to provide any extra information or anything like that like I wanted time to be able to do that and so I spent several hours last night filling out both the application for a sales tax like authorization situation and I also filled out that registration form which they did get back to me and I am approved to set up there pending I get the sales tax information so that's super exciting and I'm not expecting like a lot of foot traffic for the craft like art fair but it doesn't bother me because I'm not paying anything to set up there so it, if, if nothing else it'll give me an opportunity to practice like on a small scale setting up for markets like getting my displays down how I want them to be and also learning how to um in small amounts I have to I'm if I do get approved for the sales tax um authorization I'm gonna have to file them quarterly so it'll give me an opportunity before the holiday season to get one of those in um and make sure that I'm doing everything properly and that way if I'm not and I have to like pay in a little bit of taxes or something because I didn't charge enough or something like that then it won't be a huge amount because I won't have accumulated that many sales if there isn't a lot of foot traffic so it's not gonna hurt my feelings if like there's not a ton of sales the other thing I did last night was I went ahead and filled out the information for a square and so I work so they're sending me the free square that you get whenever you sign up so I'll be able to take card at the vendor at the craft fair so one of the things that I'm going to be working on slowly is going through everything that I already have and adding it to my squares inventory as well as like seeing what I need to make more of and the other thing that I'm going to be doing is I need to research like more information on how to put the sales tax information into Square because I know that it can like automatically formulate how much how much you need to charge extra.
for every transaction, but you have to tell it like the percentages and what the tax is for in order for it to do that. Another thing that I spent time on last night was writing down the pattern that I made for these strawberries. Um, this first one that I'm working on sewing up right now, I'm probably not going to attach to a keychain. I'll just sell it as a strawberry by itself because I made it a tad bit too big on accident. Um, but the other ones all turned out super cute. That's why I ended up making three because like I wanted to make another one of the red ones since this one was a little bit too big. But yeah, I think today what I'm going to work on is some okay i know that this trend is like super burnt out and like a lot of people who crochet are kind of tired of it but and i mean i was too i'm tired of it myself but i have taken a long break from making them and i really want to make some more um especially like smaller ones that i can put on keychains because i think i bought like a 50 pack of keychains so it's a significant amount of things that I'm gonna need to make to use all of them but I want to make some bees but yeah here's the first strawberry done I'm going to probably make a tutorial for this just because like there's a lot of tutorials for like a regular strawberry but I really enjoy like the look of the little puff stitches and I didn't find a good tutorial that was in English, had a voiceover, um, and like had like a written or had like a written pattern that came with it. So I'll probably be releasing a tutorial for this. So the strawberries are done. You can see the size difference on this one compared to the other two. Um, I'm gonna go start working on the bees, but I'm probably not gonna film a lot of it. So you guys are a little bit lopsided because you're sitting on the top of my car but um i figured out i would update you guys this morning because last night i did not do an update i stayed up until like 11 crocheting and by that time like i was exhausted so i was like i can just tell them about it in the morning but so the first thing i made yesterday was two well, let me see if i can find the other one two like tiny tiny bees for keychains let me know what you guys think about like i'm trying to get it to focus do we think that we just want the eyes do we want the eyes and the smile do we want the eyes the smile and the blush do we want just eyes and blush like what do we think because i feel like all three is a lot going on so i'm either gonna do just eyes and blush or eyes and smile i made one that was <clears throat> just eyes that was the third thing that i made so i think i'm gonna do eyes and smile i think that that looks the best out of all three of them but those took about 30 minutes each then i made a baby rattle so it's a it's like a tiny bit bigger than the keychains ones and you can hear it's got little bells in it so i feel like it's still small enough that a baby could easily grab it though so that's good and then i made like what i consider like a regular size b um this is about the size that i normally make them so i really like this one it's like it looks so much better whenever it's a bigger face with the blush like i feel like on the tiny bees it just kind of looks a little bit weird um and then so i made all five of those bees and then i started making like a jumbo bee because i want like some statement pieces at my market I'm not gonna be upset if it doesn't sell because like I'm not selling this bee for less than $45. I've, it's literally got like thousands of stitches in it. So um, I timed it last night because on my app tracker and I from the brown to the front, it took an hour and a half and I charge $15 an hour. 
so it was like my my app was telling me it was like 25 dollars. the yellow bit like the extra is what i've done this morning because i really wanted some coffee and so i like woke up really early because my daughter woke up early and i was like can we can you wake up husband drive me to the store get me some coffee but he's in the fish store right now and that's where i'm recording all of this um we're about to go to sports academy because i want to get two eight foot tables and possibly a tent because uh, they don't provide any of it for the like art walk <clears throat> so i'm gonna buy all of that and then we're gonna go to walmart if they don't have it there and i'm probably gonna get a lawn chair as well um or like one of those like white folding chairs or something um but yeah so i'll update you guys after we're home from all of the shopping Google. Oh. so strong you want to try another one okay there you go try that one oh, oh you're so strong Yeah, you're strong. Yeah. Uh, strong. So, we made it back from the shops around two hours ago. But I was getting super, like, physically and emotionally overwhelmed at the stores. Like, all the walking. And it's hot here. Um, It would literally, like, started bringing on contractions. So, I was like, um, we need to go home now and rest. So excuse the state of my hair and the state of my garage. It's very messy. Um, we're in the middle of like trying to do a house clean out so that we can get the new nursery set up and stuff. But let me show you guys what I got. So there's a little bit of a glare on the camera due to the light reflecting through the window. But this is the canopy that I got. It was a little bit more expensive than the cheaper ones that Academy had because it has like the straight vertical um, legs as opposed to the like slanted ones but on the slanted tents even though they're like super cheap they on their tent top is only like eight foot by eight foot whereas this one is 10 by 10 and also these ones are just a lot more sturdier my husband is super bougie so he got this reclining chair and i ended up getting a director style chair so this is the chair that I got, but I got the sofa kind because that way my daughter can also sit with me. For safety reasons, we got 150 pounds of sand and like these bags that you put the sand in so I can tie it to the tent and that way it doesn't blow over because the wind here is absolutely ridiculous. So the sandbags and the sand were from Lowe's because they didn't have any at Academy. And we also got these two eight foot folding tables at Lowe's because they only had seven foot ones at Academy. So my phone is probably gonna die soon. So I'm gonna have to record this pretty quickly, but I wanted to go over the prices on everything with you guys on what we spent for the supplies. So the first place we went was Sports Academy and we spent $74.99 on the chair that I picked out, like the director love seat chair for me and my daughter. And then my husband's chair was $69.99. And then we bought the tent and it was $99.99. And after tax, everything was $265.18 spent there. So at Lowe's, I actually had a discount code. So we got a pretty good, decent amount off of the total. The white sandbag like holders that we got to put the sand in, they were originally $15.98, but with my discount code, it was $14.38. And then the two tables, they were each $89.98 originally each. So we took off $9 off of both of those and we only paid $80.98 for both of them. And then the last thing that we bought was those three bags of sand and they were originally 
$6.38 each, but we paid $5.74 each. So our total altogether at Lowe's was $209.53, and our total discount was $21.52. I also wanted to show you guys the things that I got at the thrift store yesterday for the market. The first thing that I picked out was this tablecloth and it's super cute. It's a large tablecloth and it was only $2. I also picked up some random craft supplies, not because I have anything in mind for it, but it was just so cheap. So like, why not? But I got some plain black ribbon and it looks like a new, a new roll and it was only like 50 cent. I also got this like striped gray and white ribbon, also only like 50 cent, but I think this one is open. I grabbed some pieces of scrap fabric because you never know when you need some and they were only like 25 cent a piece. There was four total, so I got this blue one. This one is super soft and I'm thinking about putting it in like the bottom of one of the baskets to put some of the baby things in there. This one's also super cute. And again, I'm probably gonna use it to line some of the baskets because a lot of the wicker baskets sometimes will like snag little tiny pieces of yarn and I don't want any of my projects to get messed up. My favorite thing that I found was this little basket. It is probably supposed to be used for like napkins or something, but it was only $1. So I really love it. I'm gonna use it to put some like small like keychains or amigurumi in or something. The last thing that I bought was this pretty big basket. It's got like, one tiny hole in it right here but I'll just put that in the back or something and put like a large stuffed animal in front of it. I don't know how much it was because it didn't have a sticker on it but it couldn't have been that much because I'm sure it was probably like two or three dollars. Now that we're home though I'm gonna finish up this large bee that I started last night um, because I have less than a month until the market so I want to try to get a lot of things made um, like I said, I have never gone to the art walk here in my town before, so I don't know how much foot traffic there is, but so like I don't have any like expectations for how much I would make. I'm hoping to at least make back the cost of the tent, which was $100, so we'll see how it goes. So it is 645. I finished this big guy up. He is super massive. Um, I also wrote down all of the patterns for the four different size bees that I made and I'm going to decide what my final project for today is going to be. Um, I am going to take a break from making the bees for a few days. Um, I do want to make some more smaller ones that are in yellow and black because not everyone likes the yellow and brown combination. They like the more traditional colors. I just like doing the yellow and brown because I think it's more like of a soft look and also I don't hate myself and wanting to work with black yarn all the time. I'm trying to decide if I want to do a triceratops or a snake next and I think I'm going to go with a snake just because I don't feel like making the little horns today. I just want a um, kind of project that's going to be pretty simple and straightforward. Not that the triceratops are hard, but still. So I'll put the pattern in the description box below for the snake I'm using. Um, I'm going to be using this blue, I think. So I will let you guys know how it turns out. Hello, I am back. So the last time I updated you guys was last night when I was starting a snake. This is what four hours of my life looks like and I just realized I inadvertently matched my shirt to the snake but that's super cute so um I do want to make some smaller snakes I was wanting to make a little like statement piece um I'm planning on like weaving it in the tent that I bought like this and having it like hanging um I don't really expect it to sell um very quickly because I am gonna have to charge a significant amount for it since it did take four hours but hopefully it will draw people into my booth and then I want to make some smaller snakes using a different pattern so that I can be like well if you don't want to buy this snake that's super 
you know, expensive, I have these other snakes that might be more in your budget. Um, this morning, I cannot record because I forgot to charge my phone. And then this afternoon, we had a ridiculous thunderstorm. There was hail everywhere. And a pretty decent sized hail too. But I did end up getting my TMU order in. So I wanted to show you guys everything that I got. So the first thing that I got was a roll of stickers. And they're kind of just like um, cute little like squishmallow stickers i plan on probably like using them as like free little things for kids whenever they come to my stand i'll just like have them like some of them pre-cut off and then i'll be able to hand them out um because i think that that's you know something good to have for little ones the next thing i bought was a pack of stitch markers one because i only had two different colored stitch markers so I really like wanted a pack that had a lot of different colors so I can like mark different spots in my bigger projects and not have to be confused about it. I also just lose my stitch markers like all the time. So it's not awful to have more. Another thing that I got, which is kind of also like a personal thing, is like a pack of like cottage core mushroom style stickers. And so I'm super pleased with them. Something else that I got off of Team U, which is gonna be super helpful, is like this case that has a lot of different metal darning needles in it. So I did get my keychain package in, but let me show you. In the photo that they had, they had like another metal ring on here that could open and close. Um, and these unfortunately do not have it. Um, so I'm either going to have to sew them on, which I don't mind doing. I just want to make sure that it looks good and is like pretty sturdy. Or I'm going to have to order the little metal rings to attach them with. And I haven't quite decided on which one I'm going to do. I'm probably going to try sewing a couple of them on and seeing how difficult it is, how much time it takes. And if it ends up taking too much time or it doesn't look that great, then I'll order the little metal rings. But I'd like to get started on actually attaching them. So something else that I got was these little thank you stickers that have like different floral patterns around all of them. Because I just really love the aesthetic of like the flowers and the white uh, background looks really good to me. My plan is to use these stickers to attach these thank you cards to the bags of the items that I am going to be selling. So all of my clear plastic bags that I'm going to order soon off of Amazon will already have a thank you card stickered to it. These are blank on the back. So since I don't have business cards yet, I'm going to write a little handwritten note um, thanking them for supporting my business and also write down all of my socials on here in case they have any questions about their product that they bought or if they want to order anything custom made. It is something that I want to do, um, get like business cards made, but these little thank you cards are super cute and they will do for now. And also I don't mind having like a handwritten kind of card because I feel like that means more than just an ordered one. So something else that I got that I'm gonna like just include as like freebies in the adult bags if they make a purchase um, is these little flowery floral stickers. I mean, who doesn't love a good succulent sticker? So um, they were only like 70 cent for this whole pack and I figured since it's my first market, if I do make sales, it might be a nice little add addition to my thank yous. I also got this little heart like cutter. It like is like a, um, a hole punch and I'm going to hole punch the corner of the thank you cards because I feel like that's just like a nice little touch. And also I plan on making my own 
price tags for now and I figure like a little heart hole punch is a lot cuter than a regular one for whenever I go to tie the price tag onto the stuffies. The final thing that I ordered from Timu was this bag of like hair clips and I was worried that they were going to be too small but I feel like this is actually a good size but I'm going to try out making some fidget toys with them and if I don't like them then oh well I have a bag of hair clips it's fine but yes so I started this week on Wednesday and is now Saturday and we are four days into this week and it is already almost I think nine o'clock but I do not have a good time so I'm going to stay up and crochet some mini snakes probably I'm hoping that they won't take more than like an hour to an hour and a half each the progress that I made last night on this snake was only to like this third section of blue and so like more than probably like two-thirds of the snake is what I crocheted today um it did only take four hours but I just wasn't feeling the greatest today and I had to keep taking breaks so but I love it it's a good statement piece for my booth and I feel like because it's like a art walk it's nice to have like some more impressive pieces on display and be like look like this is actually you know art it is handcrafted also we are about to cross 200 subscribers at this time of recording Maybe even we will have crossed it, hopefully, by the time this video is uploaded. But I am super thankful for every one of you guys. Like, I did not start posting, like, consistently until probably, like, a month and a half ago. So to have gone from, like, four subscribers six weeks, to, six weeks ago to almost 200, like, that's freaking amazing. I love that you guys don't find me entirely boring. Okay. So Saturday night, I got all but this much of this snake done. And then I finished up this snake yesterday morning whenever um, we were driving to take my husband to lunch for Father's Day. So I got this snake done. And then yesterday I also completed this entire snake in coral. And just for size as a reference, this is the big jumbo snake that I made so very much a big size difference it's like double the length almost so um it's these ones only take like an hour and a half to do they're super cute I really enjoy the pattern it's like really easy to follow and then yesterday I also started a green snake but I got to like here um because I was doing it while we were playing board games for Father's Day um so this morning I have completed this much while my husband was making us breakfast so I'm gonna finish this snake and then I'll probably be done making snakes for now um because my friend my best friend asked me to make her a seal and I've been eyeballing some low to no seal sorry I've been eyeballing some low to no sew patterns for seals anyway so she requested it be in gray so I'm gonna make her that and then um she wants me to put it on a keychain for her so that'll give me a good opportunity to practice sewing on the keychains to see how they look and whether or not I need to order metal rings and like plier apply them on um and then so I'm gonna make one to two in gray and then if I have time I will try to make one in white as well because for the market I want to have multiple options but yes it is 1 15 we just ate lunch so I'm gonna finish this snake up it's probably only, only going to take like 15 minutes um and I can't record it because the pattern's on my phone so I will finish that up and then I'm going to record the process of making the seal <laughs>
it is just before 4 30 i finished up the little green snake and then i made my first seal but i used a 3.75 millimeter hook whenever i was doing this one and i don't know how well you can tell the camera but i very slightly overstuffed it um so it's a little bit bigger than what i would want for a keychain so i'm just gonna sell this one by itself and then i made a second one using a 3.5 millimeter hook and i sewed the little thing the little keychain on um i think it'll work out fine the only thing i'll have to do is just be really careful that i don't disturb the stitches which i did a pretty good job on this one um not like stretching them out or anything but i feel like it'll be secure enough that it's fine to just um use like some scrap yarn or in this one i used like the instead of weaving in the tail um from the end of my project i just ran it through the top and did a couple of loops and then we did it on the bottom so it's pretty secure um since this one is going to my friend i am already starting on doing a third seal and then i'm going to do another one that's in white probably two more that's in white so i can have like a even amount of gray and whites yeah it's a super easy pattern um it i think only took me 45 minutes while i was learning the pattern um to make it and so i'm confident that i can charge like eight to ten dollars depending on um how like low down i can get the time on making them um but this is like almost halfway done already and it only took 15 minutes so i will update you guys whenever i am done making seals um and we can decide what our next project is going to be okay so i forgot how many seals i had done in the last video but as of right now i have this gray seal two keychain ones but one is going to my friend and then i have one keychain white one which there's a glare on and one regular white one and I was a really big goof. Um, they did have the little rings that come with it to attach. They were just in a separate like Ziploc inside of that Ziploc and I didn't see it at first. But it worked really good to put it on there and it was a lot faster than sewing it on. So that was enjoyable. Um, and then the last thing that I made last night was this little no-sew whale. I've been trying to find a good no-sew pattern because the one that I use right now, you have to like sew the fins on and it adds a lot of time to the project and I want to try to keep my prices like as affordable as possible but also pay myself what my time is worth. Um, so I'm going to make another one of these tonight and time it and see how long it takes because I do need to do some editing to get this video uploaded. And so if you watched until here, thank you so much. Um, I enjoy spending time with you guys and hopefully this video wasn't super chaotic um let me know if this is a type of format that y'all would want to see again um i am going to definitely be doing a lot of market prep over the next three weeks because there's not that much time between now and my market um and then part of that time i'm going on vacation so i won't be able to make as much then um but yeah, I'm super excited. I'm proud of everything that we accomplished this week. Um, and we are almost at 200 subscribers and that's amazing to me. So I appreciate every single one of you and I hope you have a wonderful day.